Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11. But, but Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come with a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation. And so uh, I want you to remember that, that Christ came, not as everything else comes in this world, not of hands, not things that can be made and destroyed, but, but Christ came uh, as the, the child, the Son of God, the perfect sacrifice. And of course, uh, um, Today and next week and then Easter, we're, this, this is all going to be about Jesus and, and about his coming because I think it's so important, guys, that we uh, remember uh, that Christ came. We remember why he came and the fact that you and I, we are beneficiaries of this. Uh, uh, as a matter of fact, you and I uh, were a sole purpose for everything that he did. Uh, it was you and I that... that uh, um, and, and our sin, unfortunately, that, that said, okay, listen, uh, they can't... Can, think about the conversation between Jesus and the Father. Just for a minute. Let's just put some humanity here. Can you imagine Jesus going... Well, first off, the Father starts it and says, uh, Son, um, I got good news and bad news for you. What do you want first? <laughs> okay, he probably didn't do that. He said, Son, um, uh, I got a job for you. But only you can do this job. And so um, we're going to just have to send you to earth uh, to be the sacrifice. We know that Jesus wasn't real excited about this. He was excited about coming and he was excited about what he was going to attain afterwards. But during the process, if you remember in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said what? Lord, if this cup could pass over from me, please let it be. And then he says, nevertheless, it's not my will be done, but yours. And so then he goes back and he prays again. Uh, uh, Father, if, if this cup could pass over from me, let it be. Nevertheless, it's not my will, but yours. And then, of course, the third time uh, he goes and he says, listen, this is what you want, Father. It's not what I want. And so we know that, that he, uh, he wasn't excited about what was about to happen to him. And, and of course, in the next two weeks, we're going to uh, uh, unfold some of that. Uh, we're really going to look at, though, the, the resurrection because we're going to focus on the good. Amen? And, uh, and so, so he says, hey, you know what? Um, Christ came as a high priest in verse 11. Christ came as a high priest of the good things to come. Uh, with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, uh, not made of hands. Listen, he is the greater and he's the more perfect tabernacle. Look here in verse 12. Not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place uh, once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Remember this word eternal, uh, because, you know, so many times I, I don't think that we, we really grab hold of eternal, amen, because everything that we see has an ending, doesn't it? I mean, just go to Walmart and buy your favorite candy and there's an expiration date on it. Uh, go and anything you buy, there's an expiration date, right? People expire, unfortunately. Uh, every one of us have an expiration date, which we're, the Bible even talks about. It's appointed unto man once to die. And so you and I, we have an expiration date. I know that's not exciting. I'll get to the good stuff here in a minute. And so, but, but we do, and, and everybody does. And so, so Jesus is sent here, and, and his blood is so uh, 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 amazing and so necessary because the blood of animals uh, was a, uh, just a simple covering, uh, if you will, to, to keep what was going on. It was the blood of Jesus uh, that contained the healing power and the, and the opportunity for us to have eternal life. Now, eternal, something that goes on and on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Uh, I know it's, we think of Twinkies when we think of that, but, but I don't want you to think of that. How many remember Twinkies, right? They don't expire, do they? They just get a little more firm. That's it. But they're, they don't ever rot like McDonald's fries. How many have ever done a McDonald's fry uh, um, experiment? Go buy a thing of small fries and just put it on your counter and forget about them. And in six months from now, uh, you can eat them if you wish. <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. They're not moldy. They're not, I mean, they're just a little shriveled up, but they're still edible. 
I, well, as edible as they were when you bought them. And so they, they, in other words, they never expire. So there's two things you guys just learned about life that has no expiration date. Twinkies and McDonald's fries. How many are going to go home and try the fry thing now? Right? Yeah, just stop by. Some of you are like, I'm not wasting my money. You're, it's, a, it's an experiment for your kids. So look at it that way. Uh, but he says, you know what? It's eternal. We're going to have eternal life. A forever thing. Look here in in 13. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer uh, sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience and dead works to serve the living God? In other words, God says, listen, not only have I come to save you, but I'm going to cleanse your conscience... To let you know that you're forgiven. How many here struggle with the fact that you're forgiven? So many people go, I can't forgive myself. I just, like, I can't let go of it. And and yet God's going, "Why, why are you holding on to this? Why are you allowing this to defeat you? Listen, I came and I died for you and all your sins that, that, that you had the whole time up until you asked for me to, to be your savior, they're all forgotten. Not just forgiven, but they're forgotten forever and ever and ever and ever, never to be remembered again. See, the only thing that keeps us in prison, guys, is us. Listen, as we spend the next three weeks on Jesus and what he did and why he did for us and who he is and what he gave us, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be uh, reminded. I want you to celebrate the fact that, listen, we're under no condemnation. Heaven's our home if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now, if you don't, I'm sorry, there's no hope for you. Uh, And I'm not trying to be negative here, but I'm just telling you, uh, the hope is in Jesus Christ and only in Jesus. There is no other way to heaven. And so you can think, I'm a good person. I didn't say you weren't good. The Bible said you weren't good. God says there's none good. No, not one. That's why we need a Savior. That's why Jesus came and he died uh, for us. Look here in 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, uh, who through uh, the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgression under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Listen, for this reason, Jesus is the mediator. Jesus goes between us and the Father. It is because of Jesus that you and I can get to heaven. It is because of Jesus that the Father hears our plea. It is because of Jesus that we are forgiven. It is because of Jesus that we are given the gifts. It's because of Jesus that we're touched and we're blessed. Listen, when you think of God, you cannot think of the Father without thinking of the Son. Because if you don't think of the Son, you can't get to the Father. And so Jesus says, listen, I'm the mediator. You don't, listen, you don't, you don't go to another person and ask for forgiveness of your sins. That, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that we go to Jesus, the great high priest, the only one who can carry our sins and cast them into the sea as far, uh, and, and as far as the east is from the west, uh, the depths of the sea, never to be remembered again. It's only Jesus. And so when we think of Jesus, man, we got to think of all the things that he is all the things that he has done and all the benefits that we have uh, because of him. I mean, listen, eternal life. I know sometimes it's hard to grasp that because everything that we think of has, ha, does have an expiration date, but Jesus has no expiration date. He lives forever. He doesn't have a beginning. He doesn't have an end. Remember Melchizedek that we learned in chapter seven uh, and Melchizedek, we learned all about him and, and it says, Hey, this is a picture of Jesus. No beginning no end. He always was. He always will be. This is our Lord. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the conqueror of everything. Through him, we can do all things. I mean, think of who Jesus is is guys and and if you don't take great pleasure in understanding that this is a this is a, a the, this is our god this is a man that came and died for you and I and he did it for one reason you and I there is no other and so god says listen i'm setting it up so that you guys could have success so you could go on and on forever and ever so you can be with me so you can experience all great things to come I was reading uh, an article and it says in, in, 
In 12 years, the UN wants a one world government within 12 years. And some people go, oh, that's a good thing. So what? I, listen, uh, I don't agree with it. I don't like it. But I do get excited about it for one reason. We're closer to the coming of Jesus. Amen. Listen, bring on. The, let's, just, let's just do it and get it over with. Right. Um, it's just kind of like, just listen, um, just, 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 just make it happen. And, and let's just, let's just move on. Because the, the sooner that happens, the sooner Jesus is coming. Don't wait 12 years. Do it tomorrow. I mean, it's Monday. Why not? Right? So start the week off with a bang. Let's go. Right? And, and so uh, as, we, as we're watching and, and you look at the Bible and you look at what's happening in the world and they're running parallel, man, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Well, why can we say that? Because we have the promise. The promise of a great high priest who loves us, who died for you and I. And not just to die so we could have life, but man, he hangs in there with us every day. Every day. How many in here are not as righteous as they wish they would be? And he still hangs with you and me. Listen, I'm just telling you, God is, is, is the God of, of love. Not just love. Now we can't we can't go. Okay, I have you know God loves me, therefore I can do whatever I want. That's not true. God loves you so much, and He saved you the way you are, but He doesn't want you to stay that way. We got to move closer to Him. Amen. So let's look here in fifteen. And for this reason, He is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. In other words, listen, his, his covering is greater than the first covenant or the first promise, which was the law. And now he comes in, he goes, you know, listen, the goats, they just covered uh, your, your sin, but me, man, I cleansed your sin. I cleanse them to where they don't exist anymore. How many here have had stained clothes and you, you love your clothes and you got to get the stain out so you use a Tide stick or you use uh, Windex, right? I've, I've learned Windex is a great... How many use it? Some of you were like, really? <laughs> you're like, you're a man. How do you know that? Like, just so you know, I learned it from another man. <clears throat> and so anyway, <clears throat> Windex. Put some Windex on it and it takes the stain out. How many of you try that now? Amen, right? And so, so see, listen, Jesus is like the Windex where nothing else can touch it but only Jesus, and he cleanses us. He doesn't cover our sins. He cleanses them so they don't exist anymore. Wow. There's a big difference, amen? Look here in 16. For where there is a testament, there must also be, uh, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. The death of the testator. In other words, if you have a will, you know, we call them a will and a test, will and testament, right? So somebody fills, how many has a living will? Wow, some of you better get on it. Because if you die, guess who gets everything? Cuomo. So, <clears throat> I mean, the state. So make sure that you, you get it. <laughs> Oh, I told you I was in that mood today. Make sure that you guys make out a, a, a will so that your children or your loved ones get it and not, it doesn't go to the state, amen? And uh, So make, that, make sure that happens. But, but here's the thing, in order for all this to happen, in order for us to be in, inheritors of, of everything of God, uh, Christ had to die. In order for there to be a testament, the testator has to die. And so, so we have this last will and testament that we belong to God. In order for that to happen, for, for us, for the inheritance to happen, for us to inherit all the things uh, that Jesus has as well, Jesus has to die. For you and I get to heaven, Jesus has to die. For our sins to be forgiven, Jesus has to die. For you to be washed white as snow, Jesus has to die. For us to call heaven home, and God, our Father, Jesus has to die. Listen, this isn't free. This isn't just handed out. There's a price to pay. Uh, if you go and, and you look at the wall where all the names of, of the soldiers are um, who have died in wars for our freedom. And, and I have a patch that I bought and it said, freedom isn't free. The cost is written on the wall. 
And so I just want to say thank you to all those who served and thank you to the families who sacrificed loved ones serving for us. But I also want to say this. Salvation isn't free. Salvation hung on the cross. You, you see what I'm saying? Listen, for, there, for us to be inheritors or inheritees, if that's even a word, for us to inherit, there you go, let's just try that one. Someone has to die. And Jesus said, that will be me. I'm qualified. I'm the only one qualified. But I'm going to die for you. And so, so Hebrews here, he's just telling us, listen, it's not of the law. It's not a good work. And so if you think you're a good person, I hate to tell you you're not. And if you think your works are good enough to get you there, I hate to tell you they're not. How many work, uh, you say you work really, 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 really hard. You do really, 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 really good for a really, really, really long period of time. And then you blow it. <laughs> right? <laughs> when you blow it, that, that meant you're no longer eligible. <laughs> because now you're a sinner. And Jesus says, yep, that's why I have to come in. So that when you blow it, you're forgiven. Huge, guys. Listen, I'm, I'm just telling you, get ready for Easter because we're going to learn a whole lot about Jesus as the time comes along. Look here in 17. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at, uh, at all while the testator lives. There's no, there was no salvation. There was no saving grace while Jesus was alive. And he knew this, so he had to die. 18. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise he sprinkled with blood the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. Verse 22, And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood, and without shedding of blood there's no remission. There's no remission of sins. There's no forgiveness. There's no washing. There's no cleansing. There's no uh, uh, getting it out of our lives. Guys, I'm just, I'm just telling you, without the blood, we're nothing. Without the blood of Jesus, we're not inheritors. And so when people say, oh, I believe in God, and then I'll ask them, well, what about Jesus? Oh, he was okay. Well, guess what that tells me? You don't believe in my God. You don't believe in the God of the Bible. If you say Jesus is, oh, he set the way, he was an example, blah, 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 whatever you want to say, listen, you, you've missed it. You, you, you can't believe in God and not believe in Jesus because they're the same. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? They're three in one, the Trinity. And so if you're here today and you go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual, <laughs> okay, Everybody's spiritual. I hate to burst that bubble. Because everybody believes in something. That's what makes them spiritual. But it isn't until you say, I'm a child of God through the shed blood of Jesus Christ that you're born again and you're actually a child of God and that you're going to heaven. That's what Hebrews... That's, listen, this is, all, this is all chapter 9. All throughout chapter 9, it's the shedding of the blood, 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 because without the shedding of the blood, we have nothing. You have no hope, no life, no nothing. It's the shedding of the blood that makes it all happen. Do you guys, is everybody awake? Is it warm in here? No. <laughs> Everybody's like, leave the air alone. I don't even know where I'm at. Hold on a minute, I gotta catch up. My notes. There we go. Shedding of the blood. Uh oh. I'm on my own. There it is. I thought it quit again. You got to love electronics. Here we go. Verse 23. Therefore, therefore, because of the shedding of the blood, therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the, heavens, uh, the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. And it's talking about, uh, um, listen, for, for uh, it to be so in heaven, it's got to be the sacrifice has to be better than the sacrifice that was done in the Old Testament. That's what he's talking about. And so therefore, uh, uh, we're not going to sacrifice goats and cows and, and doves and pigeons and, and whatever else there is. We're going to, we got to sacrifice... 
Jesus. Therefore, therefore, it was necessary. Look here in 24. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year without blood of another. Listen, you know, some people... uh, uh, When I talk to people, they're like, yep, yeah, I, I, man, every, I get saved all the time. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because if you got saved all the time, that means that Jesus would have to die all the time. And the Bible clearly says that, that he dies once. He doesn't die over and over again. He doesn't come back every year and die so that your sins are forgiven. It's a one-time deal. There's power in the blood, Amen. And so if you go, well, hey, I get saved all the time. I get saved every year. No, you don't. Let let me help you here because I really want you to grab hold of this. Uh, If you have truly, truly, now listen, uh, I'll give you a statistic that might not uh, uh, bode well with you, but it's an accurate statistic. Uh, 53%, some say 54, some say 53% of the church, that would be people that go to church, um, are not born again. They're not saved. And by the way, you you may not like the term born again, but Jesus himself used it in John chapter 3. So I'm just quoting Jesus and using his terminology because, man, I I don't know what it is. When I came to the north and I would use the term born again, uh, people would be like, (laughs) and I'm going... I'm like, wait, whoa, hold on a minute. I just, like, what is, what's up with that? And man, I, you know, oh, and then I got this. Oh, you're, <laughs> you're one of those born againers. And I'm like, are you from the South? Born againers? That's what I, uh, okay, anyway. And they go, oh, you're one of them. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, I've been called a holy cupcake. Yes, I am. Listen, when you, when you listen, listen to me now. When you're born again, when you ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, not here, but here. How many have heard me say this before? Yeah, I say it over and over again. You know why? Seven to 11 times before you grab hold of it. Not 7 and 11, but 7 to 11. You might know Jesus here, but I'm talking to know him here, a personal thing. Remember I used the puppy as an illustration? Let me use the puppy again. If it's my puppy, you go, oh, that's a nice puppy. He's cute. Oh, he's fun. And then I take him home, and then your life is over with my puppy. It's done. But when it's your puppy, you're like, oh, I love my puppy. It's my beautiful puppy. It's mine. I own it. I love it. I take it outside so it goes to the potty and I bring it inside and it, and it sleeps with me and it's on the couch and it's all over the furniture and it's, and it's everywhere it shouldn't be. And I even feed it at the table because I love my puppy, which I don't do, by the way, and I don't promote. But either way, I love my puppy. See, it's a personal relationship now with your puppy, right? That's the difference between head knowledge and heart knowledge. Jesus becomes very personal to you. I talked to uh, uh, the two sisters. I, uh, I went and visited uh, some friends. And at any rate, um, I was, there were two sisters there. And uh, one, one believes in Jesus um, and one uh, doesn't believe in Jesus. And so... Uh, they know Jesus exists. They don't question his existence. They just don't believe he's the son of God. And so as I was talking to him and, and I asked the one, I said, uh, when I asked, well, I asked both of them, I said, uh, so when you die, you're going to heaven? Yes. Why? Um, well, because I believe in Jesus. I go, wow, that's the perfect answer. So then I asked the sister, I said, um, are you going to heaven? Yes. Why? I believe in God. I went, oh, okay. Do you believe in Jesus? I mean, Jesus is Jesus. I don't, what do you mean? I go, no, no, no. Do you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world? No, I believe he was a good person. I go, so here's the reality. In according to your answers, according to your answers, uh, you're going to heaven and you're going to hell. 
And so, as a sister, how do you feel about your sister going to hell? And of course, at this point, they're both like, I had to talk them off the ledge for a minute. And, and, and I go, I go, I go, well, how do you feel about that? And, and, and the one sister on the left, we'll call her lefty and righty, uh, not that they were right, but you know what I'm saying. So the one on the left, she's like, well, hey, whatever she wants to believe is her life. I'm not going to judge her. Or I, go, I go, okay, so let me back up. According to your answer, you're going to hell with your sister. And they're like, hey, you don't have a right to judge me. And I go, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just telling you, according to Scripture, where you're at. And, and if Jesus isn't your Lord and Savior, then you're not going to heaven. And if you think that she can get to heaven according to what she believes, and you get to heaven according to what you believe, that tells me that you're not adamant about your sister going to heaven with you, which means either you don't love your sister or you're not really saved. I love my sister. Then you're not really saved. There's a difference, guys. There's a difference. And, and 54% of the church thinks of Jesus just like that, right here. If you're good, you're going to heaven, but according to the Scriptures, without the shed blood. Well, listen, we're coming up to Easter. Why do, you, why do you think Jesus died on the cross? Why do you think a resurrection was so important? It's because you're not good enough, and I'm not good enough, and none of us are good enough to get to heaven. And the, and, and the writer of Hebrews, he's saying, listen, you have to understand because he's writing, remember, he's writing to the Jews because he really wants them to understand what's going on. And he's like, listen, I'm, I'm just going to tell you that Jesus had to die for you to get all the things that you believe that you get according to the, the Old Testament. Jesus has to die. There has to be a shedding of blood. You understand there's a shedding of blood because the Old Testament, that's all they did was kill animals to cover your blood. But Jesus cleanses your sin, not just covers your sin. That's the difference between the law and grace. The author is trying to get them to understand that you got to take your, uh, uh, when you look at the puppy, it's not here, it's got to be here. If you don't listen, if you're not, if you don't have Jesus here, which means um, if someone uses the Lord's name in vain, it should be like a dagger to you. If someone talks bad about Jesus, you, you listen, it should be, you should, you should feel like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, it should be feeling like someone's talking bad about your, your, your child or your parents or, or your spouse. And, and if someone uses the Lord's name in vain and it doesn't move you to some reaction, you got to wonder if you're born again. So when we look at the scriptures, the author is trying to say, listen to me, listen to me. Hey, Jewish people, because that's who he's talking to. You have religion, but you don't have a relationship. You're religious, but religion means nothing. You need a relationship. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ and only through the blood of Jesus Christ can you have this relationship. Look here in 25. Uh, I'm sorry, 26. Uh, um, no, let's back up to 25. Hey, let's just dance around for a little while until I figure it out. <laughs> it's really tough when you don't have your own Bible. Don't look at me like that. Not that he should offer himself often as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with the blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Jesus has the power for you and I. And it's only through his power do you and I get to go to heaven 27, and as it is appointed for men once to die, but after this, the judgment. Now, I know some people teach that, that it's an appointed day. Like, like, in other words, um, Jesus is up there going, yep, their expiration date is April 25th, uh, 2020. Their expiration date is March 10th, 2021. Because they can't go backwards in March and April. 
And so, yeah, there, he, you get what I'm saying? That's not what it means. What it means here is that it is appointed for humanity to die once. We see this happen. We see people grow old and die of natural causes, and we see people die young of not natural causes. We see people, and we say goodnight, and they go home or they go to bed, and they don't wake up on earth the next day. Death is all around us. Seems so more now than, than, than like every time you turn around. Um, man, we're, we're saying goodbye to somebody. Because here's the reality. It is appointed unto man once to die. People say there's only two things you have to do in this world. That's pay taxes and die. That's not true. You're just going to die. You don't have to pay taxes. You might not live comfortable if you don't pay taxes, but you don't have to pay them. But every one of us are going to die. Unless we go with the upper taker and not the undertaker. Amen? Amen. And so, yeah, I'm looking for the upper taker, man. I don't, listen, I don't want the hearse. I want the, I want the trumpet. And so the point unto man wants to die. You know, I realize you're not going to escape it. Now, you can eat all your greens. Praise Jesus, that keeps you healthy. And you can exercise a whole lot. Praise Jesus, eat your greens. You can do, listen, you can, do, you can do whatever. But it's guaranteed there'll be a day that you're going to stop breathing. This, this is the sad part. I'll get to the good part in a moment. You can't escape it. And by the way, James says you're not promised tomorrow. Your life is but a vapor. You're here for a little while and then you vanish away. But if you have Jesus, you live eternally forever and ever and ever in heaven. Where the streets are gold and it doesn't matter if you're the garbage man or you're the street sweeper. Who wouldn't mind sweeping up gold all day? <laughs> or you're going to live eternally in darkness. The Bible says where the worm does not die. And the worm is referencing people. Now, why do you think the scriptures reference people as the worm when they're in hell? It's because, anybody, how many people ever went fishing? Nice. How many people have ever seen a worm when you break it in half? And it does what? Right? I know it didn't look the sweetest, but you get the idea. It, what does it do? It is constantly wiggling and writhing in pain. And that is the lost man or woman in hell. Where the worm does not die. For eternity and ever and ever, forever, 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 forever. You'll be the worm. But with Jesus, you'll be in the Abraham's bosom, if you will. Can you imagine crawling up and sitting in the lap of God the Father? Just think about that just for a moment. Listen, he's going to love us with all the love that God has. And he even says, you being evil can give good gifts. How much more do I love you and I'm not evil? Think about that one for a second. That should take his, your, your picture of love from this level to this level. Guys, it's appointed unto man wants to die. And then after that, we're judged. Now, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're judged but not condemned. Amen? Listen, that should be exciting news. But if you don't know Jesus, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. There's no hope. There's no nothing. You're just in trouble. And by the way, once you take your last breath on earth, whatever you have chosen, that is your eternity. There, once you die, nobody, nobody can get you out of there. 
There's nowhere in Scripture does the Bible talk about a holding place. There's nowhere in Scripture does the Bible reference that you help someone else after they're already dead to get to the cross. There's nowhere, nowhere in Scripture. As a matter of fact, you're going to, listen, the Bible tells us, and we've learned last, last month, the whole month of, of um, March, what we learned was that we got to go and tell them. Compel them to come in. Tell them about me, Jesus says. Tell them about me. Compel them. Compel them. In other words, stay after them and 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 stay after them. Doesn't that get annoying? But that's what we're called to do. Stay after them. But once they're dead, move on. Your hope, your chance, your offer is today. And if you're alive tomorrow, it may be tomorrow. And it may be the next day. But see as how we don't know what we're, when, our, when our expiration date is. Let me encourage you to take care of it today. Let, let me encourage you to make a decision today. I mean, Lord forbid anything bad happen to us. Amen? But we got to think about it. I mean, I'm not trying to be a downer right now. I'm just telling you, you got to think about it. Verse 28. Oh, by the way, in 27, uh, when he says after this, the judgment, the, the judgment is where you see God. And Jesus, by the way, Jesus is the judge too. And you're going to say, but God, I was, I was religious. And he's going to say, away from me, you worker of iniquity. Or you worker of sin, for I never knew you. And then you're going to be judged and sentenced. And you might go, well, that's not what happened. And, and, and Revelation says that everything is written in the books. Everything you've done is written in the books. I don't know about you, but there's some books I don't want anybody to read about me. <laughs> Amen? Man, and here's the beautiful thing about knowing Jesus as your Savior. Those pages are blank. Because it's under the blood. But for those of you who are not under the blood, it's going to get read aloud. We need Jesus. Verse 28. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for Him. He will appear a second time apart from sin, for salvation. For those who eagerly wait for Him, though when the trumpet sounds, we're going to see Him again. For those who eagerly wait for Him, when you draw your last breath here on earth, you're going to be with Him. You're going to see Him. For those who eagerly wait for Him, He's going to be standing there like He was with Stephen. If you remember when, when Stephen was being persecuted, and by the way, Paul uh, at the time was Saul. We'll explain that another day. And he was holding the coats of those who were killing Stephen. And Stephen looks up and it says that Jesus stands and looks down on him. Not looks down as in, how dare you, but looks down eagerly waiting for him to come and be with him. The scriptures say that the angels throw a party in heaven when one of the saints of God passes away. Listen, there's a time of rejoicing. On earth, we rejoice because we know what's going to happen to us when we die. On earth, we rejoice because we know what's going to happen no matter what happens here on earth. We know who's truly in charge. And then in heaven, can you, all right, some of you think you know how to throw a party. Can you imagine how God throws a party? Can you imagine how the angels party? I mean, because listen, I'm sure they got moves that you and I can't even fathom. And there will be dancing in heaven. Think about that. Verse 28, so Christ was offered once. In other words, he only died one time. You're either going to believe or you're not going to believe. It's your choice. Was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will appear a second time 
apart from sin for salvation. The trump will sound. Man, when the trump sounds, the glory of God's going to shine. We're going to be raptured up out of here. Those who know Him will be raptured up to be with Him forever and ever and ever. I don't know about you, but that's an exciting day. I'm looking forward to that day. And every time I look out into society or I turn on the news or I hear something, I'm just, I'm really just holding on to this. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. The Bible says in the end times, there'll be a falling away. How many people used to go to church and now they're not interested? How many people tried Christianity and now they're not interested? It says that they will be, listen, that they will, uh, uh, children will be an offense, literally. Disobedient to parents. How many children do you see today that are bla- listen? They rule the house, and the and the child's uh, the child rules the house, and the parent surrenders. It talks about the lifestyles that take over society. How many of we? How many of that are we seeing? I think last count we're somewhere around 194 genders. I don't know. I can't keep count. I just threw a number out there. Look at what's going on in the world and you look at what the Bible says and we are right on track with the end times. I'm 51. I'll be 52 this year. I know I don't look but 29. I'm good with that. But without question, I believe if I die of natural causes, a generation of 70, a blessed one is 80. I'm going to hope I'm blessed. I believe I'll see, uh, I'll be alive for the rapture. Amen, right? Yeah, and you're younger than me. <clears throat> so, listen guys, where are you at? That's, that's the question here today. You're going to die. That's, that's a given. It's just a matter of time. So where are you? Who is Jesus to you? Is Jesus the Son of God or is He a good man? Is Jesus the Savior of the world? Or just a good man that set a good example? Your answer will determine your destiny. And so I just want to give you an opportunity. The Bible says that Jesus is the Son of God, the Savior of the world. He died on the cross. He rose the third day. He conquered death and hell. He's at the the right hand of the Father. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to heaven except through me. It actually says no one can get to the Father, but the Father's in heaven, so we'll use that. Where are you with Jesus? If I have talked to you and convinced you that you're not saved, you better get right with God then because you have a problem. Either your relationship is not right or you're actually not saved. Born again. I like to use that term because it's irritating like, like sand under the, the foot, right? Where are you with God? Are you a child of God's? You know deep in your heart. You know who you are. Because the Holy Spirit will not fool you. And so you need to Decide. I'm going to give you an opportunity. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you do not know if you're going to heaven when you die, I just want to give you an opportunity to fix that. And so if it's your desire, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you believe that He died on the cross for your sins, you believe that He conquered death, you believe He's at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says that it's by faith you believe this. Then I want you to pray this prayer. Now understand, the words aren't magical. The words are not what saves you. It is uh, simply uh, a time uh, to, to lead you through it so you have 
a, a date, a time and a date where you can go, nope, this was the day that I consciously made a decision to give my life to Jesus Christ. That's, that's why I asked you to pray the prayer. It just helps you get through the process. It helps you to, it makes it more tangible. And so if it's your desire, you pray this prayer, dear Lord Jesus, today I surrender. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that it is through your shed blood and only through your shed blood that I can get to heaven. I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you conquered the grave. I believe that you are at the right hand of the Father. I believe one day you're coming back to get all the saints. According to your word and my belief in you, I am now one of your saints. If that's you, you now believe would you just lift your hand? Today is the day I give my life to Jesus. Amen. You can put your hand down. If you're here today and you say, today I believe, today I repent of my sins, today I walk in a different direction, today I ask for forgiveness, today I make Jesus my Lord and Savior. Again, I ask if that's you, would you just lift your hand? so I can rejoice with you. Amen. You can put your hand down. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you and I thank you, Father, for an opportunity to ask Jesus to be our Savior. Father, I thank you for your words. I thank you that you've not kept us in the dark. You've not kept uh, uh, the way to heaven a secret. You've not complicated it. Father, for those who, who have asked, Jesus to be their Lord and Savior, for those who have asked you to forgive them of their sins, for those who have put Jesus in their heart and not their head, Father, I pray your hand upon them, a special blessing, Father, a special strength, a special protection, that when they leave here, Father, that they're different and they know they're different because they have felt a touch from you. Keep them, Father. Keep them from the enemy. Keep the enemy from them. Use us to help grow each other. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We at Connecting Point Church are excited to have you join us. When you come, you'll experience a friendly, lively, and casual family-like atmosphere that welcomes you as you are. Our messages combine straightforward biblical truths, humor, and life-changing challenges for you to learn and grow in God's Word. We believe in connecting people to Christ, to the plans and gifts He has for them, and with people in our community who share these values. We also believe in reaching out to our local area and the regions beyond. We're dedicated to being a place where your entire family can believe, belong, and become all that God intends you to be. Discover the abundance of life in Jesus Christ as you begin to understand the roots of the problems and learn to apply the tools for you to triumph over your challenges today. It'll be a breath of fresh air in this unsettled world.